I wouldn't say I'm a huge Arthurian legends nerd. I would say that um, I was uh, once in the musical Camelot, so. Today, it is that time. It is time to talk about the books that I read in March. I had what I would describe as kind of a okay to middling kind of March, uh, but I did find some really great reads that I would love to share with you today. So it looks like I read nine books in March, and that's 3,877 pages, and my average rating was a 3.3. It was kind of just all over the place. I had things I didn't like at all. I had big disappointments, and I had books that have entered my favorite books of the year list. Today I'm going to start with the book that I liked the least, and if you stick around until the end of the video, you can find out my top recommendation for the month. The first book I'm going to talk about is Sunbringer by Hannah Kainer. This is the sequel to God Killer, and it was 100% my biggest disappointment of the month and possibly of the entire year so far. I enjoyed God Killer. When it was finished, I gave it a 3.5 and then ended up bringing that up to a 4 because I felt like the ending was so strong that it made me really excited for the sequel. The sequel, however, started really strong and then just kind of wasted, I felt like, a lot of the potential that the first book, that the ending of the first book had given it. This series is about a world where gods exist because people believe in them. People stop believing in the gods, then they stop existing. One of our main characters, she is a god killer, so she travels around and takes care of troublesome gods for people for a fee, of course. We also have a young girl who is traveling with actually a tiny little god of her own. He is the god of white lies. We have a retired soldier. And in this book, we also gain the POV of the king. I don't want to spoil the first book, although I don't think it's much of a spoiler, but there's something wrong with him. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But he was uh, an interesting, a new edition POV for this book, and I really enjoyed his perspective. But ultimately, I felt like this book spent a whole lot of time wandering around with the characters talking about nothing and doing nothing and not being together, not, um, not being a part of that found family that we found in the first book, which I actually ended up really enjoying. So honestly, um, I gave it two stars and that two stars was generous. I was mad the whole second half of the book. I had such expectations and they were so dashed. And if you read a lot, you know what I mean? Like that is the most awful feeling to think that you've been looking forward to something and then it just doesn't live up to all that anticipation. So sadly, I cannot recommend this book, and that's all I'm going to say about it because it made me sad. Okay, so the next book I'm going to talk about is The Warm Hands of Ghosts by Katherine Arden. I gave this book three stars. Um, I thought it was okay. I didn't dislike it, but it also didn't wow me as much as I thought it would when I read the synopsis. This book takes place in World War I in the trenches, primarily in Belgium. Our main character, Lara, she is a nurse and um, she is returning to the front after some very difficult circumstances at home because she needs to find out what has happened to her brother who is a soldier in the war who is missing. Laura can also see ghosts and there is a strong supernatural element that is very, I kind of verges I would say on magical realism at times, but there are some characters or actually one character, I guess, who is a supernatural being who is a major part of the book and there are whole chapters following kind of his, um, where he is, not his POV exactly, but I really love World War I books. It is an interest of mine. It is a period in history that I find so fascinating, particularly the poetry and the music and the writing and everything like that that came out of the First World War. And this book, um, this book was a little bit of a disappointment to me and it may only be because I have read so many books that are set in this time period. I don't think it's a bad book. I think Catherine Arden's writing is really beautiful. I think the characters were fairly well written. It just did not come together for me. And in particular, I didn't really like the supernatural elements of the story. I didn't feel like they were adding anything to it. I felt like there was enough going on with the horror of the war and the soldiers and everything the nurses are seeing that I just didn't feel like we needed that supernatural element. So that kind of took it down for me. So that's a three star, but I did enjoy it. Was my first 
book by Catherine Arden, would read again. Um, I'm still looking forward to reading The Bear and the Nightingale and all the books that go along with that and seeing what I think of those. A disclaimer that sometimes, if you've watched my other videos, you may have seen me rate some of these books and now I'm giving them a different rating. And that's because sometimes I sit with a book for a while and maybe I keep thinking about it and so I'm gonna raise that rating and maybe it is out of my head immediately and I don't ever wanna think about it again, so it's gonna come down. And this book is one that I unfortunately lowered the rating a little bit on it because after I was done with it, I just found that I didn't think about it. I didn't have any interest in reading the other books in the series. And that book is Legend Born by Tracy Dion. And this one was sad for me because I was anticipating this book so much. I've seen so many people say great things about it. It is a young adult fantasy that deals with the Arthurian legends. Um, it has a great diverse class. It talks about issues of racism and bias in a way that I thought was really wonderful but I didn't really like the story itself. Our main character, Bree, goes away to a college program, an early college program at UNC Chapel Hill. She finds that there is a secret society and this secret society is based on the Knights of the Round Table. In fact, the people who are members of this, some of them are actually descendants of the original Knights of the Round Table. And I will be completely honest, that was pretty exciting to me. I wouldn't say I'm a huge Arthurian legends nerd. I would say that um, I was uh, once in the musical Camelot, so and that's about it. I'm not really a huge fan of the Arthurian legends, but I mean, I was interested in the story and I was interesting to find out. But the thing that hurt this book for me was that it was so incredibly tropey. If you have read a young adult fantasy series in the last 10 years, you have seen these tropes. There is a love triangle that is very obvious from the beginning. There is kind of a, an insta-love aspect of it. There is definitely a super aggressive chosen one trope, and the entire book is written in first person present tense, which is another thing that I at this point would consider to be a trope of those books, and it just didn't work for me. I just felt like I'd read it before, and I also thought that at over 500 pages, it was way too long for the story that it was telling. I thought you could have cut a lot out of the middle and it would have been a stronger story. But I do respect that a lot of people really love this book, and it doesn't mean that you wouldn't like this book, but I didn't like this book. It didn't, it was just, just not, not really a fan, but I did get through it. I didn't DNF it, which I kind of thought about doing a couple times while I was reading it, so. Next book I have is Caliban's War by James S. A. Corey. Caliban's War is the second book in The Expanse, which is a sci-fi space opera series that I am trying to work my way through this year. In the series, you follow a ragtag group, um, a found family spaceship. That's not right. You're, they're not family members with the spaceship, right? In the story, you are following a crew on a spaceship and they are kind of at the center of a lot of political intrigue and drama that is going on. Once again, we are following James Holden. He's still frustrating. He still thinks that he knows better than everyone else, but he is still a really compelling character. We also meet a soldier from Mars, a Martian Marine, actually. Her name is Bobby. She was fantastic. I loved her. I can't wait to see more of her in the series. We meet an ambassador from the UN from Earth. She was also awesome. The book did a lot to take away my complaints about the first book that all the female characters felt like they were written by dudes who'd never talked to a woman before. So that was good. It was a plus. I did think it was very different from the first book. This felt much more like a political drama. There was a lot of stuff with um, this ambassador from the United Nations on Earth trying to prevent a war between Mars and Earth, who it seemed like other people were very anxious to have take place. It wasn't as action-packed and there wasn't really as much of a central mystery, but I just thought it was, it was a really great read. I, I enjoyed the whole thing. It didn't feel too long and I'm looking forward to the next one. So three and a half stars for this, down from four for the first book, but I hear that people really love the third book. So I'm looking forward to that one. All right, now we have another one that I um, upped my rating a little bit on, and that is Bride by Allie Hazelwood. I gave this a 3.25. Actually, I think I did give it a three on Goodreads when I initially rated it, but that's because when you read things on the Kindle, you get done and it flashes up that little screen that says, would you like to rate this book right now? What do you think? You just finished it, right? You know you know what you want to rate it. And I was in a little bit of trauma from uh, some of the spicy parts of that book. So I said three stars. 
but I think that was a little bit low because I do think the book was really charming. Uh, there were a lot of really funny parts. All of the classic Ally Hazelwood tropes. I, I really enjoyed all that. I just didn't like the spicy parts. So I would kind of recommend maybe if you're not sure about them or you know you don't like monster romance, go ahead and read it and just plan to skip that part because you can skip it and the book will still make sense. Oh, I didn't say what it was about. So it's a love story, arranged marriage story between a werewolf and a vampire. Um, and they have to be married for at least a year to show that there is cooperation between their people and they cannot kill each other. There's a lot of political stuff going on in this story. Um, our two main characters are really charming. I could totally see why they would fall in love. There is a child character who manages to not be irritating, which is amazing because child characters are so annoying in so many books. So anyway, I gave this, I upped it to a 3.75, might take it all the way to a four. I haven't decided, but I, I was still kind of um, not really down with the spicy parts. And, and I don't, I feel kind of bad. Like I, I, knew, I knew going in that that stuff was not for me. Um, I knew that like, I'm a pretty like tame romance kind of person. So I knew that going in and I don't think it's fair of me to rate it down when that is something an entire established fandom of people really enjoy. So if it's something you think you would like, I would recommend it. Uh, solid read, very charming, classic Ally Hazelwood. We're gonna say four stars. Okay, next we have The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. And this is another one that I upped my rating on after I read it because I did keep thinking about it. This is a Japanese inspired fantasy set in a world where, I can't get over this part, sorry, I keep saying it. Uh, set in a world where even though they have advanced technology, everybody still fights everyone else with swords. I don't know, it's just a thing. It's a thing, um, there's some magic that goes along with it. I didn't really understand the magic in this book, but you just gotta do it. I enjoyed that there was an older female character who was one of the main characters in this book. She and her son were basically the two main characters and she was really interesting because she was living in this society that oppressed her and did not allow her to be her own person at all because that is not a role that women were allowed to have in this society. And we see a lot of change in that as the story goes on and that was really enjoyable. I did not enjoy the relationship between her husband and herself. I thought that there was a lot of forgiving him for pretty terrible behavior and pretty oppressive behavior that was a little bit too easy for, for my taste, but I do think the writing was good. My uh, down rating on the book is really because of the pacing, because I thought the climax of the book happened way too early and then there was an awful lot of time with not a whole lot going on. But it did make me cry. I cried like three times in this book and I stayed up until three o'clock in the morning to finish it. So I don't know how I can rate it any lower than four stars. So it's a recommendation from me. I am extremely excited to read Blood Over Bright Haven, which is ML Wang's, um, I don't know if it's Dark Academia, I'm gonna say it's Dark Academia story that she's written that I know is being released by a traditional publishing house this fall. So I'm looking forward to reading that. I haven't read that yet, um, but I definitely think she's a great author. All right, we are getting up to the books that I really liked this month. And at 4.25 stars, we have Some Desperate Glory by Emily Tesh. This book was just nominated for a Hugo Award for Best Novel, which didn't surprise me at all. It was one of the things I said when I finished reading it was, oh, this better be, this better be nominated for some kind of award this year because this book is really trying to do something different. We follow Kier, short for Valkyrie. She is uh, honestly kind of a pill. She's a lot to deal with. She is very self-righteous. She's been raised in a militaristic society that teaches her that her entire job is to hurt the alien race who destroyed the earth 20 years ago ish she is kind of the worst for the whole at least 30 first 30 percent of the book she's super frustrating you're not gonna like her but that is on purpose because it turns out that the things that she has been taught are not exactly the truth about what happened so this book is really about the dangers of propaganda and, and fascist societies and that was where it took a really unexpected term. It's not a typical military sci-fi. It's not a typical space opera. There are alternate dimensions. There are different versions of people. 
um, that kind of thing. I just thought it was really fantastic. I complained in my original review that I thought it felt like a young adult book, and I kind of stand by that a little bit. I do think it could have been a young adult story very easily, but I can also see why it was published and aimed at an adult audience because there are so many interesting themes here. So if you have not checked this one out, I don't see as many people reading it. Um, I highly recommend it. It was one of my favorite books of the month and I gave it 4.25 stars. Two books remaining this month and at 4.5 stars, we have What Feasts at Night by T. Kingfisher. I just love T. Kingfisher. She's one of my favorite writers currently. I don't think I've read anything by her that I haven't thought was um, charming and moving and funny. And everything that I read by her um, is just wonderful. So this is a sequel to What Moves the Dead, which was based on the fall of the House of Usher. And in this story, we follow our main characters as they go to visit an old hunting lodge and figure out what strange things are happening at night. It's a short book. There's probably not a lot I can say that's not gonna spoil the story, so I wanna be very careful, but I would start with the first book. I think the first book was slightly stronger than this book, but I thought this book was fantastic too. I don't really have any complaints. They're two of my favorites. If you like horror, especially if you like your horror with like a little bit of um, humor or tongue in cheek mixed in with it, Either one of these books are absolutely terrifying unless you are particularly terrified of the things that are scary in the story. And you can look that up. I'm not going to tell you what they are and spoil it right here. But honestly, if you've read any other Taking Fisher, especially, and you've been reluctant about the horror, horror is not super duper frightening horror. So it's a pretty good place to start. So I gave it 4.5 stars. And this is one of the books that I'm probably going to end up picking up when I see it on sale somewhere. All right, so if you've made it all the way to the end of my video, um, I can show you the lone five-star read that I had this month, and that is The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. And I have to say that the cover, there is no dust jacket. It is beautiful. I love this trend. I hate dust jackets, right? But I love a hard cover. So I would really like for more publishers to start doing this kind of thing. But anyway, this is a fantasy mystery, which is a combination I'm seeing a lot lately. I also read The Hexologist earlier this year, which I thought was very similar in terms of like tone and mystery and like some of the themes involved. This was fantastic. I think it's my favorite book by Robert Jackson Bennett that I've read, and I'm already like a huge fan of his. I love his Foundry series. I think that's an amazing series, and I think that this book just really did it for me. If you like mystery and fantasy, you're gonna be all in. Like the mystery, is a legit mystery. It's not just like a fantasy mystery where it's solved in like 10 pages. Like the whole book you're going, trying to figure out all of these mysteries that are going on. So we follow a apprentice who's kind of the Watson character to this woman who, Anna, who is a um, detective who works for the realm of this kingdom. And this fantasy world is extremely well done. We have these leviathan-like creatures who come and try to break their way through the walls of this society or this world or these cities once a year that they have to try and protect from. And one of the things that's going on with the mystery has to do with these creatures. So that felt almost, I would say, very Attack on Titan to me, if you're familiar with that anime. So it was very funny. It was very heartfelt. Um, I loved the main character. I love that we weren't with the detective all the time, that we were with her assistant. It definitely was very, very Sherlock Holmes. I thought this was something different. This was something special. And if you like those genres, or if you've read any Robert Jackson Bennett, or if you like Sherlock Holmes mysteries and you think you might like a little fantasy, sure, why not? Um, I would give it a try. This was a five-star read for me. It was my favorite thing I read all month. It was one of my most anticipated reads for the year. And as soon as I can, I'm going to be picking up my own copy of this to keep on my shelves as kind of a five-star book trophy, as I like to call them. So definitely, 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 definitely recommend you check this one out. So that's it for my books that I read in the month of March. Like I said, it was an okay reading month. It wasn't as great as my February, but my February was so good that I don't know how it could have lived up to it. I'm already two books into April and they've already been amazing so far. So I am hoping to be back soon with some more reviews of some more great books. 
And as always, I thank you all so much for spending your time to watch this video and hang out with me a little bit. If you haven't, please consider subscribing. Leave a comment down below. Please tell me what your favorite book was that you read in the month of March, because I would love to talk about that with you and maybe get some recommendations. I hope you all have a great week. Bye.